Hello viewers, SuperGT here. This week's Daily Race C sees the return of the Spa 24 hour layout and the return of dynamic weather, which would make for a very interesting race. I'd be racing for Ferrari, trying to bring honor back to the boys and girls at Maranello. This was my opening session for Ferrari. And as you can see, it clearly did not go to plan. That was me basically forgetting to plug in my wheel, which is not an optimal strategy. And here is my qualifying. So as this session went on, slowly getting quicker, 229.9, then a six. But I know I can go into the low 29s, perhaps into the 28s with a very good lap. Now, Eau Rouge and Radion, you can do flat out in this car and in group four in general. And this middle sector is really about carrying a lot of speed and making sure you, of course, hit those apexes, get on the power nice and early. Poo on corner, down the bottom of the hill here. Again, a very tricky corner where you really have to maximize track limits, and I was a little bit wide. As you can see, the ghost pulls away slightly. I know it can go quicker, therefore. This is the end of the lap, breaking about 125 meters before the corner, really abusing that curb on the right-hand side to give yourself a better angle through the second apex. This lap is going to be a slight improvement, a 229.3. And that was good enough for second on the grid in my first race. So let's jump in. Up behind the Mazda Atenza, which is as of late the go-to car in Group 4. But I can assure you that it isn't the meta when it comes to this race. We'll see exactly what the meta car is later on. But... I wanted to get really aggressive here at the start of this race. The Ferrari has a good launch initially, and then of course I have the slipstream and this very long straight. Now this guy kind of just opened up the inside for me, gave me a very big invitation, and I said thank you very much, I will quite kindly take first place off of your hands. So there we go. Now we have the simple task of remaining calm for seven and a half laps and not crashing at all. So let's see if we can do that. So through Eau Rouge and Radion, lap number two. This is where the lap is quite difficult if you're defending because you have a very long straight. The car behind can get some slipstream. I had to defend on this occasion. So I wanted to preserve my position and managed to do so in fine fashion. Now, a little bit later on in the race, we see our first signs of some weather coming in. Spa is uh, fairly famous for its inclement weather. And we have a large dollop of rainfall arriving imminently. So let's see how that affects the race and our grip. It's pretty much directly overhead at this point in time. So as we come into here, I'm not actually seeing any changes on the moisture meter, which is just to the left of the tires, uh, bottom left of the screen. So the grip is the same at the moment, despite the, the rainfall being directly above me. But I suppose it's one of those scenarios where you have to kind of tread with caution and sometimes being in the lead isn't always the best place because the people behind can kind of react to the mistakes that I make. But um, it wasn't until the end of lap four where the rain began to clear. I set a very satisfying 229.999 and towards the end of lap five I made this mistake. My approach angle wasn't very good and I almost completely lost control of the car thankfully just gathering it back up losing about half a second and by the end it was actually quite a dominant victory really doing Maranello very proud and everyone in Italy obviously rejoicing So that was a mighty fine warm-up and it actually set the tone for race number two unfortunately now at the beginning here we're going to try to be nice and aggressive like we were in the previous race having to start p6 this time around so a couple of other people jumping into the lobby going slightly quicker and kind of tells me i need to imp improve my qualifying lap once more and i was trying to repeat the move i made at the beginning of the previous race wasn't quite able to do it here against the Nissan Silvia, which is, I would say, the meta of this week's race. Seems to be a car that covers all bases, has good top end, but also 
handles the uh, the corners very well as well. And um, by the end of lap one, this car did a weird jump, and then everyone did a weird little shimmy. And I can sit here ruining my internet basically because it caused all of this. And yeah, that's basically my issue. The internet didn't want to work for about half a second there. Unfortunately, as a result of all of that, I end up dead last. P16 out of 16. All I could really do is try to fight back and make up some positions. And that's exactly what I did here. This was the best moment of the race. The only thing I could do, really. One overtake. Let's try for two more in the space of a couple of seconds. Pass the Jaguar up the inside of the Nissan. Not the cleanest, but I'm going to take it. Three positions in about five seconds, whatever that was. Not bad, but it was a pretty terrible race. Finishing 11th overall. So Maranello are now considering sacking me as a Ferrari driver. But we're going to jump in to another qualifying session. This was really weird, right? Because this was the weather on this qualifying session. Now, if you hit retry, you will have exactly the same weather. But if you exit and then go back in, the weather will be completely different, as you can see. Now it is dry, it is sunny, and the conditions are not the same. So this is something that's going to be very strange um, if you want to set a fast qualifying lap you're going to have to keep exiting and retrying to get optimum conditions which is quite a silly thing now we had the problem with the wind speed once and they kind of leveled that out and made that the same but now we've got another issue here where the weather is different depending on each turn you take to do qualifying but anyway Starting P3 for race number three. And this is where we're going to try to bring glory back to Ferrari. Let's see what we can do. And this was a really interesting race. I, I really enjoyed this one. The if dynamic weather plays a bit more of a part than it has in the previous races. In the two races I've done so far, it has appeared. The, the rain has come and gone, but didn't really affect the conditions. Um, you know, the, the, the dry tyre was still the right tyre. We're going to make this three abreast here and watch on board from Tommy Concrete, the pole sitter. As we go into Lake Oom, that's how you do it. Three abreast into a corner. And we somehow managed to do it without murdering each other. So it shows that it is possible. I'm going to go defensive here to the inside. And this moment here, this kind of really summarises this race. I really wanted to, sh uh, to show you the onboard here of Tommy Concrete as he was the pole sitter and it really goes horrifically wrong as we have lots of contact and myself and Chris there in second we managed to pull away quite a big gap on this opening lap purely because of all of this fighting and I'm very much I'm not a pacifist but I would say that I do advocate for being nice and clean as possible on the opening lap because if you start fighting too much you are just going to lose so much time and this was a very good lesson of that exact thing El Justicero from flying in with a nice little hit there and you see here Tommy Concrete has dropped into P6 now into P7 and is a good three or four seconds off the lead already and that's quite amazing given that he started on pole position so it just shows you how wrong it can go if you get kind of stuck in a big confrontation a big fight a couple of battles a couple of hits maybe you get damaged you get pushed wide you get dirty tires any of these things any of these factors you're going to try to avoid them as much as possible on that opening lap even just staying in the same position and having a clean opening lap that's a success and unfortunately for tommy there um it's gone completely out of the window does that really summarize the opening of this race as uh, we're going to continue with this view here and it just shows you how much time they're losing by fighting this much now he tries this outside overtake on Kevin then breaks a little bit too late goes into the side of Cowster and all the time here they are losing time <laughs> so myself and uh, Chris up in second we're just pulling away and just saying thank you very much guys uh, we'll catch you later we'll have our own little race up the front and uh, we can dice it out towards the end of the of the uh, eight laps so still here top of radion the fighting still ensuing 
as we head on to the Kemmel Strait for the second time. Is he going to go defensive here? I'd imagine he is. This is again going to be a moment where he loses lots of time. Calster plus up the inside, fair enough. And then this is such a slow way through this corner as they make contact. It's so awkward, it's so slow. And I mean, I'm looking at this now as uh, in hindsight, but I was kind of wondering, you know, during this race, why am I gaining so much time? Why are these guys battling? Why are they so far behind? It was because of all this. They were fighting way too much. They kind of needed to sort it out between themselves quite soon. And, and what you ideally need is one of you just to say, look, guys, I'm going to take charge here. Let's go. Let's go together. Let's work together. Let's catch back up. And it's taken two and a half laps, or one and a half laps, sorry, for that to happen. And by now, we have, I would estimate, a five or six second margin to third place. And that is a healthy margin, but the race is definitely not over. An eight lap race is a long lap as well, two and a half minutes. And then, of course, we have the weather to contend with. And, of course, we have Willits Bros just behind. And he's going to try and take that win away from us. So lots of factors to consider here. Lots of things at play. It's up to me to juggle them the best I can. Coming up towards Blanchemont lap, number two in the Ferrari. Flying through here. You can do it flat. Slight lift for me though, just playing it safe. Make sure we don't run wide. Get dirty tyres, which can really hamper your lap. On the brakes nicely. Over that kerb. There we go. Getting that angle nicely for the second apex get the drive away this car actually rotates quite nicely let's take a look at the weather there it is the rain is coming but it's up to us to judge it when it does arrive so 229.9 and ideally i think in a top split or second split race you need to start guessing at least into the 29s if not a bit quicker during race uh during the race uh in race pace end of the uh camel straight lap number three the gap was big enough that I didn't have to defend here. And you can see on the radar, bottom right of the screen, the rain looks quite sizable. It is the light blue colour, which is the lightest of all of the grades of rain. But um, it's up to me to judge the, um, the lack of grip when it does arrive. And finally, at the end of the lap, you can see there, the moisture meter began to rise slightly. I was very, very... Uh, pedestrian through Blanchemont playing it very safe and again on the brakes breaking perhaps 10 meters early and just not really sure exactly where to break it's quite tentative um, not not dropping into the clutches of second place but doing just enough to survive I suppose now we were setting a 230 there Tommy Concrete 229.3 and into the low 29s that was one and a half seconds quicker than the lap I just did and therefore at that rate you know, by lap 7 lap 8 third place is going to catch back up so despite that very poor opening lap from Tommy there's a very big chance he can still catch us now here uh, second place was willing to work with me I was still always going to cover the inside I didn't want to surrender the lead but with the bump draft, it kind of sends a signal that he wants to work with me. I'm still going to defend, take the bump draft, and then take over the racing line. And so it sent quite a clear signal that uh, we could work together and try to prevent third place from catching up. This is lap six now, so we are approaching the latter phases of this race. And every time I look behind, third place was just slowly but surely edging closer as um, our lap times were in the low 30s or high 29s and I'm pretty sure Tommy and even Calster in P4 in the Lamborghini into the 28s sometimes but mostly probably in the low 29s and so I'd be surrendering about a second a lap and so with two laps remaining this was getting quite spicy but also quite nerve-wracking as I had as we mentioned quite a few things to manage nice big bump draft there and that kind of set the tone for this lap which was going to be a nice quick one and i definitely had to improve upon my pace uh, high 29s is not bad but it definitely needs to be quicker when you have the likes of people doing 228s in the lobby so 
We're going to try to set a nice quick lap here. Try and pull out a margin as this is going to be really important. The latter phase of lap seven. Um, I'm just thinking about the opening part of lap eight whereby the car behind could get in the slipstream and go past me. Yes, he's been bump drafting me so far. But as we get onto the final lap, I'm sure he's not going to bump draft me. He's going to try to get past instead. Carrying a lot more speed here through the middle sector. Just being a little, little bit more brave on the power. Lifting off the brake a bit earlier. And I would recommend also that you are slightly lighter on the brake pedal uh, under the new set of physics in this game. I've noticed that you don't have to slam the pedal anywhere near as much as you used to. And um, I would say having a lighter left foot certainly has been helping me so far. Into the braking zone for the final chicane, lap number seven. We have one lap left to go in this race. I've held the lead for the majority of it, but am I able to stay in first place for one more lap? It's a 229.2 into the low 29s. So that's kind of the area I need to be setting lap times. So let's see if we can do that once more. Lap number eight of eight, bringing home the bacon for the boys and girls the Ferrari. Let's see if we can do it. Down the hill we go. He's half a second behind. That actually is going to be very close by the time we get to the end of the Kemmel straight here. Flat out through Eurus and Radion. Onto the straight, trying to break the toe. There's not much I can do. I'm just going to pull over to the right hand side and fully defend this. And as soon as he gets alongside, I'm going to move over to the left, force him to the outside of the circuit. It's a drag race into the braking zone. We're level. And I've got the inside line. I can just about keep the position. It was so, so close. All the time, Tommy in third is getting ever closer and has a small chance here of winning this race. And that was, I must say, a very, very good drive after such a disastrous lap one and part of lap two to then put the laps in to recover and be in with a chance of winning the race. It was a very good performance. So heading down the hill towards Puon, it's going to be tricky to overtake in this middle sector. It always is around Spa. It's towards that final corner through Blanchemont into the final chicane. Always a good overtaking opportunity. So this race is definitely not over for me. I still have to drive this final third of the lap without making too many mistakes. That's a little bit wide. I'm going to keep the momentum up and try to get a nice second apex hit. Chris there, he's going to have a bit of a drift, trying to get past, he's trying to look left, trying to look right, not quite going to work. And then through this final right hand onto this back straight, I'm going to maximise the track limits as much as possible. Chris just drifts slightly wide and loses a slight amount of momentum, which is going to be enough for Tommy to slip up into second place. And I now have two, no, three corners remaining try to survive into this braking zone is he close enough he's getting closer and closer and closer but i think i can just take the normal break uh, braking uh, marker and head into the final corner there's a bit of contact between the two of them and that's exactly what has spared me on the final apex as we're going to cross the line to win the race wow there we go what a race thank you so much for watching i hope i did italy proud let me know if i did goodbye